Biden administration reportedly admitting to secretly flying 320,000 illegal migrants into 43 U.S. airports last year. This is a blockbuster admission. Welcome back to the JP Reacts channel, my beautiful, freedom-loving friend, where we like to call out the lies, hypocrisy, corruption, tyrants, shine the light of awareness on woke absurdities, and highlight the amazing work of other freedom fighters. Now, there's just been what that really weird looking Fox News reporter called a blockbuster admission by the Biden administration. And last year alone, the administration very intentionally flew 320,000 migrants from foreign countries into the US into 43 different cities here. Now that doesn't happen by accident to fly 320,000 people from different countries into 43 different country cities in the US. That is a very intentionally orchestrated plan. Why did that happen? Why did they keep it concealed for as long as they could? Elon Musk has something interesting to say about it and what this really is. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But first, here's the details. Cause if the border being open and like, just kind of like invade here sign hung up, if that's not enough for you, we got 320,000 coming in on airplanes while the border is cut open. Why is this happening? First, let's look at the details on this. Blockbuster admission. The Biden administration has reportedly admitted to flying hundreds of thousands, 320,000 migrants into U.S. airports and has acknowledged associated security threats. Well, well you think? A report from Todd Bensman at the Center for Immigration Studies alleges that 320,000 inadmissible migrants, <laughs> it kind of means they can't come. Cool, well, we'll help them come. I flew directly into the US in 2023 alone. Well, I guess there's been more. Facilitated mostly by the CBP One cell phone app. False facilitated by the Biden administration. Maybe they use this app. CIS says it was able to confirm 43 U.S. airports have received these migrants, but the government has refused to disclose the names of the airports, citing security vulnerabilities. Well, what the government has been doing is, in fact, a security vulnerability as well. The Under the Radar program is part of President Joe Biden's dramatic expansion of immigration parole programs. Historically, immigrant parolees are given legal passes ways to temporarily reside in the U.S. due to major events such as war or other humanitarian crises. In other instances, parole is offered to immigrants on a rare case-by-case -case basis. It ain't so rare anymore. But under Biden, more than one million migrants have already been granted immigration parole directly into the U.S. or also just bypass that. Come on in, it's open, or here's a first-class plane ticket. Biden has been under fire for his handling of the worsening border crisis is happening on purpose. Still, the president has largely stood by his policies and shifted blame to Republicans in Congress. They do a lot of gaslighting. I don't fall for it. And get this, on Monday, the administration moved to stop Texas from trying to enforce immigration law <laughs> via Senate bill. The Biden administration is trying to stop Texas from being able to enforce law. Texas had scored a legal win at an appeals court after the Biden administration tried to stop them. They paved the way for the state to enact a law as early as next week. However, Biden appealed to the Supreme Court trying to halt Texas from taking matters into its own hands. We tried to stop you. Texas kind of wins. Biden tries to stop him again. From what? Enforcing immigration law. It is illegal for you to enforce a law. Now, to these 320,000 migrants who have been very intentionally flown by the Biden administration into the U.S., what's going on? Why is that? Well, Colin Rugg has this post on Twitter just giving you the basic facts. Here's Elon retweeting it and what Elon says. Treason indeed. I agree with Elon on this one. Ushering in vast numbers of illegals is why Secretary Mayorkas was impeached by the House. They are importing voters. Here's where we get to why would Biden be doing this? This is why groups on the far left fight so hard to stop voter ID requirements under the absurd guise of protecting the right to vote. It is an absurd guise. For the past few years, there's been this far left propaganda that says having having voter ID that is racist which is them implying black people, ethnic people, whatever, basically non-white people is what they mean. They're implying they're too stupid and poor to get an ID. But what they're, and yeah, that is very racist of them, the implication, what they're really doing is we don't want any voter ID so that the people that we import that can't legally vote here and can't legally be here 
they can legally vote here if they don't have to prove that they are who they are. You have to have an ID to get into a bar. You have to have an ID to get onto an airplane. It's not racist. It's called accurate accounting of people. And when you vote, of course we should have ID so that we can have free and fair elections. If you don't have IDs, what's to stop a person from voting 12 times? What's to stop someone who can't vote from voting? We have 320,000 of them that would like to vote. Let's not do voter IDs. That's racist. So to Elon's point that this is treason and they are importing voters through the southern border and on airplanes, 320,000 of them in 2023 alone. Does that sound a little far-fetched? Not really. Does it sound a little familiar? Well, it probably does if you've watched this documentary on Netflix called Wild Wild Country. If you haven't seen it, here's the gist of it, and there's something super relevant to Elon's point about importing voters. This is about like, kind of like a semi-spiritual guru, semi-cult leader named Osho, and he started a compound slash cult in Oregon. And they were wanting to run, like they had a lot of people, they were wanting to run things in ways that were against the laws of the township they were in. So what did they do? They wanted to get the laws changed. So they got new laws proposed on the ballots. People are gonna vote on them, but they rigged the election. How did they do that? They imported voters. So in the documentary, you see this cult, they were busing loads and loads and loads of homeless people from California to Oregon to live at their cult compound so that they could vote in the election to get all the laws passed that this cult wanted to pass so they could operate legally how they wanted to operate. Then after the election, what'd they do? They bust them right back to California. So this is something that happens. The cult, I mean, it was a major operation for them to do it. It was a big undertaking. Yet what the Biden administration really appears to be doing, it's the exact same thing, just on a broader scale. Not like hundreds and, th and thousands of homeless from California, but millions through the southern border, 320,000 alone through air travel. In other words, there is a precedent. They want to gaslight us and tell us this is for humanitarian purposes, say very inhumane people. But when we see them doing the exact same thing that's been done in a precedence, when we see them doing what looks like they're doing what they're doing, but they tell us they're doing something else, you can fall for that gaslighting or you can see it for what it is. If you see something, say something. I think calling stuff like this out, it's important. It's important to say what you think. The less people actually speak their mind about things like this and just go along with it, the more it gives other people permission to do the same thing. But if you speak your mind and you say what you see is happening, well, looks like they're importing voters, and you say that, helps wake up other people to consider that perspective. With this blockbuster story, what's gonna happen to the Biden administration? Will they be held accountable? Absolutely not in the court of law, but will they be held accountable by we the people? I think the more we talk about it, the more they are. Thank you for watching this video, my freedom-loving friends. Appreciate you. I'll see you on our next one. But first, here's a special message not flown into you by foreign countries. Hey, if you're a freedom lover, you know that freedom starts with your health. It's the ultimate freedom. And that's why I am proud to have started Awaken CBD. Many who have joined the Awaken CBD family have been finding they're getting amazing results with enhancing their health, like Tyler. What? I didn't even know you had a CBD company. He loves it. I've never taken it. Please don't put this on the internet pretending like I'm... Is that even safe? Do you know what you're doing? This is like medicinal. Just like Tyler said, Awaken CBD is third party tested to ensure quality, potency, and purity. Yeah, I, I don't see that written on the bottle in it. Don't put this on the, on the internet. Are you even going to pay me for this? You're doing a, just putting me in a commercial? I use Awaken CBD every day as one of my freedom rituals to help me de-stress and balance my body. Dude, this seriously looks sketchy. Do you have this made in Wuhan or something? We like to say it's not sketchy, it's surprising. Now's a great time to bring Awaken CBD into your life because you get 10% off your first order. And if you join our subscribe and save club, you get an extra 15% off your first order. Seriously, don't don't put me in this. You invited me over to watch a movie and you're just doing a commercial? Venmo me or something. You heard it from Tyler. This stuff really works. And you can get yours. Just go to awakencbd.com. Don't you guys have like a class action lawsuit against you right now? Not yet.